Oh, y'all just gave me so much life. Thank y'all for coming to see about me. Oh, my God. And if... <laughs> if you're at home, thank you for allowing me in your homes and for watching the old Jennifer Hudson show. I appreciate you so much. So thank you, too, at home. Now, let's get into this thing, y'all. Okay, I got my good old mug today. You know I have a mug every day. Now, let's see what this mug says. I like this. Be true to you. Check it out. That's the mug of the day. And I think you already know I'm about to take my sip. So hold the line. <sighs> One more time. <sighs> Y'all ain't want nothing, did you? Y'all right? Listen. All right. It is March 27th. Yes, it is. And I got a shout out. One of the greatest songwriters and I think one of the greatest singers of all time and also one of my favorite, favorite people who has become a very dear friend of mine, a happy birthday, which she likes to call an anniversary, which would be Miss Mariah Carey. It's March 27th. Yes, she is, who is celebrating her birthday. Yes, you know, it's amazing. That's one of my favorite things about what I do, you know, is being able to cross paths with people I've always admired and looked up to. So, like, y'all see me having a lot of moments, especially now when I get all these beautiful people on the couch. MC, you got to come through, too. Okay. But, like, growing up, like, in high school, I was singing Hero at graduations, right? You know what I mean? And then to one day be a part of the industry and meet people like a Mariah Carey. So, y'all, when I was um, on the, the Voice, yes, yep, you saw me throwing them shoes. That was me, y'all. <laughs> Miss Mariah Carey came in as the mentor, uh, mentor judge or coach. On the idol is called Judge Voice. Let me get it together. It's called Coach. That is very specific. She came in as a mentor, and they told us, like, the day before, like, Mariah Carey is going to be, like, the mentor. And you know what, we're working, you're going through the motions, but when they hit me that night before, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, hold on. I got up out the bed. I was like, wait a minute, Mariah Carey coming through? On the voice? And then when she got there, I got to meet her person. You know what I mean? I, it's one thing to be a celebrity, but I love to meet your human and to get to know you as a person. And when she got there, oh my God, it was like the most beautiful experience because we ended up kind of being like Kendrick Souls or something. And everybody in the production was like, they got, like, the same energy. So from there, we became really, really good friends. And I've been blessed to know this, this beautiful person within Mariah Carey. And I was able to present her with the Billboard Music Icon Award in 2019. Here we are here. <laughs> Which is, was amazing to be able to do that and witness that and present her with that because it's nothing like just giving people their flowers. You know what I mean? Like, I feel as though the Whitney's, the Mariah's, the Aretha's, the Patty's, and so many other greats, they have blessed us with so much in their careers and life. So I love to make it a point to give them their flowers just the same. And we also, from there, because people are like, where did old Santa come from? Well, as we know, at least in my book, Miss Mariah Carey is the queen of Christmas, okay? <laughs> and I deem myself the princess, because she had me beat. She pulled out reindeers and everything, and so we'll get on the phone and we'll talk about, like, girl, what you doing for the holiday? Me, I light up the whole community. Well, I ain't on MC level. She go get reindeers. She got Santa, the elves, and everybody. So we decided we would get together, and that's where old Santa came from. And then Miss Ariana Grande, who's another one of my girls, we all did the old Santa song. One day we gonna get together and do like a whole real, real duet and have a little dance record out there. That's one of our goals as well. But anyway, as you see, I'm having an MC moment. I love you, girl. And I just want to say I'm sending you blessings and love on your anniversary, MC. And I cannot wait to see you here, right here on this couch with me at the Jennifer Hudson Show, right here with all of these beautiful people. And guys, I cannot wait to get this show started. So I'm going to bring out my first guest. He's a former NFL star who now hosts one of the most talked about shows on television. Y'all take a look. This is a big week. It was at this time with Rachel yeah. that everything turned upside down. How scared are you that that could happen again? It's obviously 
terrifying. What's most important to me and, and to express to each and every single one of the women is no sex. No, no, no sex of, of any kind for fantasy suites. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What brought you to that decision? To be honest, speaking with Sean helped a lot. Okay. Um, you know, he took a very similar approach. I want my, my partner to be sure in us mm -hmm. as well and not to, to worry about that I'm you know, just doing that right before an engagement. Give it up for the very handsome Jesse Palmer! So great seeing you again. You as well. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I remember when I was at Good Morning America, yes. we had interviewed you uh, on set, back in studio. That, that, that that's us all you. there. And I remember, um, you know, we were talking about all the different things that you'd accomplished in music and in film, and uh, you made, I just felt very insignificant. Oh, stop. Sitting there at the moment, I was like, we're talking about just all these different things you've done, and I'm like, I don't have a platinum record. What am I doing with my career? And of course, now you have your own show. Yes. Congratulations Thank on you. your success. Congratulations. Thank you, because that was for a film. Now we're in a talk show space. So many things. Oh my goodness, and you were, you were on The Bachelor 19 years ago? Yeah, it's been a minute. Oh my God. I'm like an OG Bachelor. An OG? Yeah, that's right. This is you 19 years ago. Well, yeah, a little bit more hair product back in the day, but yes. <laughs> Yes, larger fitting suits as well. How would you say, how has the show changed? Man, the, the Bachelor's changed so much. I think obviously social media has played a big role in all of yeah. it too. But I, I, you know, to me, the, the biggest thing is the budget of the show. <laughs> when, when I was on the show, I got to ride an elephant. You did? And that was like the best date I had. <laughs> and and there, I, like, you know, there I am in Los Angeles. And, listen, nice. it, and, it, and it was absolutely great. You know, Zach this season, he's going to London and he's going to Estonia and he's going to Budapest and Thailand and he's flying on helicopters and he's landing on yachts. I'm not bitter at all. I was wondering, I'm like, I don't know this is getting intense. But, you know, so the budget has definitely changed. And listen, Bachelor Nation has changed too. I, I think yeah. one of the things that makes the show so unique is that it has such an amazing, passionate fan base. Mm -hmm. I think over the years, it's grown and grown and grown. So yes, it's really it it's really special and it's really cool to get to work on a show that, that has such great fans. Man, it does. Well, I think we're all fans of it, right? Yeah. That's for sure. Now, you were in the NFL when you did Bachelor. That's right. What did your teammates think? Yeah, so I had to be really careful about this. You have to remember, back when I was in the NFL, reality TV had kind of just started. Yeah. The Bachelor was very, very new. So it was interesting trying to explain to my teammates in the <laughs> locker room what I was about to go do. Wait, you're a quarterback on the New York Giants, you live in New York City, and you need help finding a wife? What are you doing? <laughs> and you're going on what show? So I had this preemptive strike strategy where I had watch parties and had all my teammates over to watch it all happen in real time. So that, I basically got laughed at yes. in real time for that <laughs> hour. But it was always interesting in the locker room that week after because a lot of the teammates would watch with their wives at home okay. every Monday. And a few days later, I'd have teammates coming up to me in the locker room. They're like, hey, that girl, Cynthia, Stay away from her, she's trouble. Oh, so they got into it. Oh, yeah, it. they totally got into it, and, and they were watching. And so, you know, we were having these watch parties back then. And it's actually kind of cool because it's been a, a full circle moment. Now, sure. did it ever make any of them want to be on The Bachelor? Oh, for sure. Yeah? Yeah, they were, like, I had teammates, like, on, on the low, kind of being like, hey, what, who do I have to call to get Do you think I could get in? And I was like, you know, I know somebody. I don't know. I was just trying to figure it out myself at the time. But yes. And it's amazing because obviously the show has grown by leaps yes. and bounds. Uh, there's been a lot of football players, a lot of athletes have done it since. Nice, yeah. nice. What would you say is the hardest part about being on The Bachelor? Was it memorizing names? Memorizing names, yes. I famously or infamously mm. forgot a name during my <laughs> season. It's amazing, you, like, like there I am. You can't find my season on Hulu. It's not out there. It's Nobody can ever watch it again. However, me forgetting a name is going to go on in infamy forever. I set a very low bar for all the rest of the bachelors. I meant to hand a rose to a woman named Karen, uh -huh. and instead I said Katie. And I'm never going to forget those names again for the rest of my life. I have PTSD now when I'm on stage watching Zach hand out roses. Please don't get the name don't wrong. I'm just watching them. So I've, so I've learned little tricks uh, throughout my life uh -huh. to not forget names. In, in Jennifer Hudson River. J see, oh, yeah. oh, that's how you yeah, do see, it. You just got to find ah. ways to just know, yeah, so you don't mess it up again. That is a great trick. Yeah. Now I have to ask, so when that happened in that moment, did you realize in the moment, like, oh my God, I said the wrong name? I was, I was staring. Or was it after? I was staring at Karen, offering her the rose. <laughs> 
And I said, I said, Katie. <laughs> and then in my peripheral vision, oh, no. another woman started walking. And, and I thought to myself, That's when it hit you. Damn it. <laughs> I screwed that up. Oh. So then I had to, it was like playing quarterback in the NFL. You just got to kind of, you got to shuffle. You got to <laughs> scramble. You got to scramble in the moment. And you did what? Well, I, I, I offered Katie the rose who, who came up, and she graciously, very graciously accepted it. And then ended up offering Karen Rose after that, and we just sort of moved on. Just like that. We've moved all just on. moved on, right? Okay. We just... Well, with that being said, more with Jesse, we'll be right back. So you're also an analyst on ESPN. Right. What's the biggest difference between hosting that and The Bachelor? Uh, yeah, it, it, they're two completely different jobs. Working in college football with ESPN is obviously a big passion of mine, but it's it's very analytical because you're just talking about football and we speak in 45 second sound bites really mm. quickly. You get to show a little bit more personality on The Bachelor. I think the biggest thing I've learned hosting the show and I continue to learn is that you wear a lot of different hats. Yeah. Depending on who the bachelor or the bachelorette or the cast is, at times you're a mentor, at times you're a cheerleader, at times you're a shoulder to cry on, uh, you're a messenger, and it's just sort of trying to figure out which hat to wear mm. in different instances, but they're two completely different roles for sure. Mm. So you have to be really present for the bachelor. That's right, yeah, to in the moment. In those roles. Absolutely. In the moment. I love that. And I'm very expressive when I talk. Yes. Um, and I speak, so I'm always trying to find what do you do with your hands? <laughs> <laughs> when you're on TV. You know, I, I think about that, like, there you go. Like, you, I think about that all the time. I got these things at the end of my arms and I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> when you're at a desk doing football, it's easy because you set them on the desk. Mm -hmm. But I do struggle with that very, very often. Did you find any go-to poses? Uh, I have a few go-to poses. What's some of them? Uh, the first one I love is the hand clasp. I call this my bachelor power pose. <laughs> okay. Um, there is, there is, I, I have a pose where I, I, I don't know what, I'm, what this is, but I just, it's just something I can do. I'm literally just holding on to my index finger now. Uh, but, it, but it keeps it busy. Does it mean something? No, nope. there's, there, there's no message to anybody at home. It's just literally trying to, to figure it out. Uh, I've started putting my hands in my pockets. I've discovered I have those in my pockets pants, are good to which have. help. Yeah, so you know, do you have any pointers? Here we go. Yeah. Bam. You see, I put my hands inside of here, and when I get cold, this is what I do. <laughs> and then, if all else fails, you get nails like this. I was gonna say. I don't expect you to get them. Uh, yeah, that might be the next step. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready, but that, that definitely <laughs> is the next level. Like, if you're going to look at my hands, I'm going to give you something to look at. There you so go. that's where that comes I in like, at. See, look, you got the leg. You see that? And the hand over the leg. Yes, <laughs> yes. So we can work on, yeah. on some of that. I just try to sit here for a while. And, and then when things get real interesting, I do this. And then I'll be like, Jennifer, you're on TV, get up. <laughs> and then I have to sit by the end of it, you're just yes! kind of like. Sometimes it's like, like in the couch. you know, so like, because you know, I think I'm at home. <laughs> like, y'all ain't want to need, did you? You see that? So, I have to say, this is one of the most comfortable couches <laughs> of any show I've ever been on. Thank it would you. be easy. You could totally sleep here. Great. Like, this is really, really nice. <laughs> but I love that. That's a, a, a something you're thinking about. Yeah. OK, so um, you have Zach as in the season. Mm -hmm. Do you think, is he your favorite bachelor? He's been amazing. I, I got to say, I, I really am so proud of Zach, and I love him. Mm -hmm. um, the thing I love about Zach is that he's super authentic. Like, who you see on TV, is exactly who Zach is mm. in Israel. He's using one of my hand poses there too. Oh, did you give him that? I gave him that one for free on the, on the first <laughs> night. But you know, it's like, because I've been in his position before and, and I know how hard it can be to be yourself. It sounds very cliche, just be yourself. Right. But I know what it's like to stand there at the mansion when women are coming out of the limo and you're meeting them for the first time. Yeah. And all you're thinking in your head is, okay, what do I need to say or do to make these women like me? Or what do I need to say or do to make millions of people at home watch me, like me. And it's, it's easy to step out of yourself sometimes and try to be the James Bond bachelor. Wow. It's impossible to do. And I think, you know, if you want to look back on this experience with as, as few regrets as possible, the best thing to do is just be yourself and be authentic. And that's who I think Zach is. That's one of the reasons I love him so much. I think that's a great answer. Interesting. And the finale airs tonight. Uh, will the fans be happy with uh, the Fans outcome? are going to be absolutely thrilled. Of course, you're never going to please all of them. There's going right. to be a lot of Bachelor Nation that is behind one of the women and a lot of them that are behind the other. But I can say this. Zach is thrilled at the outcome. Oh. He is unbelievably happy. If Zach is happy, I'm happy. And I think Bachelor Nation is going to absolutely love it. Y'all hear that? Thank you so much for being of here. Course. Will you Thank come you. back and see us? Absolutely. Teach me you need it.
Hand poses. Hand placement. Hand placement. <laughs> the finale of Bachelor airs tonight at 8 on ABC. We'll be right back. Our next guest gives me so much hope about our future. She's only 12 years old and is committed to changing the lives of children less fortunate than she is. From Arkansas, please welcome Amelia Lissaway. You started a nonprofit at eight years old. Can you tell us about it? So Lissaway's Lights is a nonprofit that I created when I was eight years old. And we donate night lights to children in foster care to help brighten their world. And since 2019, we've been able to donate over 15,000 nightlights to children in foster care <laughs> to all 50 states and nine countries. Wow. How did you come up with the idea? Well, I heard that some foster kids might have to leave in the middle of the night, and they sometimes can't take anything. And so being a kid that was afraid of the dark in my own home, I couldn't imagine what it would be like having to travel to a new home where you may not know anybody. And so having that nightlight could help them feel more safe and comfortable in that new home. That is so beautiful. Oh my God. What else are you doing for the foster kids? So besides donating nightlights, we also hold in-person events for foster kids. And we've been able to hold a pageant, a princess tea party, some days at the fire stations with the firefighters, and a lot of other things. And we hold these because some foster kids can't go to these in-person events, whether it's because of monetary reasons or just for their safety. And at each in-person event, we try and give them a bag because uh, on average, foster kids move about seven times during their whole foster wow. care journey. And uh, so having that bag, they can put all of their belongings in for the next time that they move. That's beautiful. <laughs> Whew. Do you ever hear from the kids you, you help? Yeah, we do hear a lot from the foster care organizations. And we've heard a couple of times that, uh, through like the letters that they send back to us, that the first thing that the foster kids pull out of their bag is the nightlights and uh, the people that work at the organizations always like help them plug it into the wall and they can just see the smiles on their faces. One of my favorite stories was about a boy in Oklahoma and uh, he had just recently come into foster care. And I think that he was only like four years old and he had to keep the hallway light on. And it wasn't because he was scared of the dark but it was so that he can make sure that his sister was okay. Mm -hmm. And so having that nightlight helped him feel like his sister was okay and so that he could look across the hallway and make sure that she was okay. That is so touching. Oh my God. I love this, that you're trying, to, you're trying to get other children involved. Tell us about that. So one of my goals at the beginning of this year was to start an ambassador program for people in my generation. And we have 12 ambassadors from all over the country and the ambassadors hold a packing party and then they also have to hold a nightlight drive in their community. And my hope with all of these ambassadors is that by involving my generation with the foster kids, then they can grow up and hopefully we can become one step closer to fixing the foster care crisis. Mm -hmm. I love it so much. What do you say to other children with hearts like yours that want to help out? Like how would they get started? So, you don't just have to help foster kids. There's a lot of things in uh, the world that need help, like <laughs> that need help. And so you just find your passion and use it to make the world a better place. And that's my family motto. And so, <laughs> so if you like dancing, so I go to the nursing home every month and I invite some of my friends to go dance for the residents at the nursing home. And so that's one way, good way to get involved with your community or if you like dogs or cats, then you can go volunteer at the Humane Society. So it's just finding your passion and using it to make the world a better place. Wow. You've done quite a bit, young lady. What is your goal for the next year? So this year, uh, we want to be able to donate 2,500 nightlights. And so that would bring up our total to 17,500 nightlights. And then... Uh, we also want to hold a couple more in-person events, and one of those would be a field day for the foster kid families so that they could compete against the other families and then have just fun outside. Um, do you see the joy on her face? Oh my God, we love what you're doing, and we want to give you $2,500 for you to help reach that goal of yours. Thank you. Here you go. Thank you, Amelia. Listen, you are amazing. Keep up the work. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so proud of you. Oh my God, for more. Woo. For everyone out there who wants to help Amelia reach her goal, please head to listawaylights.com. Thank you. Oh my God, Amelia, you are amazing. We'll be right back.
Our next guest is a talented actress starring in the Netflix hit show, You Take a Look. Started. That outfit is everything. I love, love, Thank love you. it. I always love a pop of color. It's so good. Thank you. It's Thank perfect you. for the happy place. I love it. This kills me when y'all go to school with like a, a sea of stars. You went to middle school with Kalani and today? Yes, yes. What was yeah. it like? I mean, it, it's so crazy. Like, I mean, like we talk about it now. <laughs> yeah, that's me and Dad at the, my, the Uncharted premiere. Um, but yeah, like. We talk about it all the time, but it's like, it's so wild. Like, the, what are the chances? Like, I was talking to Kehlani about it yesterday. Uh -huh. She's like, from middle school to being famous, like, let's go. I was like, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is, blows my, I'm like, it's wild. And I love, like, it's like just the support. Like, it's like, I'm like, I'm with, <laughs> that's a great photo. I'm with Kehlani like all the time. And like, just like, it, like, I often have moments and I'm like, wow, like, she's my oldest, oldest friend, like 14 years, like, and, like to continue to, to grow together and watch each other shine and glow is yes. just like really beautiful. That yeah. is so yeah. awesome. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. You have a black belt in karate? I do. Wow, I do. how did that happen? Okay, thank you, thank you. That's um, awesome. <laughs> I did karate for um, 13 years. Mm -hmm. um, so my mother's Korean mm. um, and she was not, oh, yeah, that's Gorgeous. even the purple belt. Um, <laughs> But uh, she wasn't able to give us Korean-specific culture growing up. She was adopted. Um, but she always wanted to make sure that we embraced our Asian heritage in whatever way and just knew that we were Asian. Um, so she found a dojo down the street from um, our house. Mm -hmm. um, and a, 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 initially, my brother started first. Okay. And I was like, I want to, I want to. Um, so, yeah, so, like, I got into it as well. Um, and like she made us promise when we started that she was like, you can't quit until you get your black belt. Oh. And I, we, we, we agreed, like, and I was like, okay. Like, and about maybe like, I got my black belt in five years. So maybe around like four, four years in, I was also playing on three different basketball teams at the time. I was like, I was a busy kid, man. Like, yeah. yeah like, going to like, pra like going from one for like basketball practice to karate, like back to the other basketball practice, like it was a lot. And so like, I came to my mom crying. I was a brown belt at the time. Like basically I was one away from getting my black belt. And I came to her crying, like, mommy, please, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm so tired. And she said, no, you promise. You said promise. like, not until you get your black belt. And I was, when I got my black belt, I was so grateful that she made me, like she made us stick to our guts in that way. Um, karate really shaped me. Um, yeah. 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 That is so interesting to me. I'm like, do you have a preference between basketball or karate? I can't say that I have a preference because it's like, <laughs> so like basketball is like, that was like my dad's first love. Okay. And so it's like, and I was a daddy's girl. Uh -huh. So like, that's what got me into <laughs> basketball. And so like, it's just a different, like, I do like the competitiveness that way, just being on the court and like having to like think fast to like, because he always used to tell me that I was really smart to the game. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't, toward my later years, I didn't practice as much on my own. So like, he's like, you're smart, so don't match your skill because you don't be out there practicing by yourself. I'm like, <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like I will like basketball has a special place in my heart that way, and then the karate with the Asian like culture, yeah. like though Japanese is very different than than Korean. It just it it's it, and karate like very much shaped my character. It's what taught me discipline. Like mm -hmm. I would not be here today if it wasn't for karate. Amazing. So, yeah, I love it. Talk to, uh, talk to us about you. Tell us about your character. Um, so I play Marianne Bellamy. Um, she is a mother. Um, Yes, that's my joke. Um, and so last season, um, you know, she was um, a, a librarian um, in this little town called Madre Linda. Um, and um, a lot went down last season um, and she had to run away. Um, and so this season we are in London um, and uh, essentially like Joe goes to like find her. Um, she's very much this season, you'll see a, a lot, a much rawer version of her. Mm -hmm. she, like last season, she very much had to play a part to 
be who she needed to be for that town. To, she was going through a custody battle like to get her kid back. Um, she's a, a recovering addict. Um, and this season, her bohemian very much comes out. Um, she's an artist. Um, she um, is a very grounded and truthful human. Like Marianne has taught me a lot um, playing her, mm. um, which, which I really appreciate. Um, and yeah, like it gets wild this season. It's, it's very, right. very wild, yeah. <laughs> You sing, and you say you learned a lot from your character. You sing very attached to your character. Yes. Which is important as an actress. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of what your character has been through. Like, why was it important to you how your character was being portrayed? Um, so, just so, obviously, you know, whatever character I play, like, I'm a mixed-race black woman, so, which means uh, any character I play is going to be black. And it was just important. The first conversation I had with my showrunner, I was like, so... As a black woman, like, are you going to be true to the traits that I feel all black people exude? Like, it's always, all of us get so annoyed when we watch a horror film and the black person's the first person to die because it's like, no, if we heard something in a dark corner, we're going. <laughs> we ain't gonna check it. No, we not no, gonna check it. No, we going the way. Like, exactly. It's like, okay, like, y'all good. Like, go ahead. Like, I'm out. Like... So I was just very, like, I was just adamant about, like, okay, are we going to, like, I understand, so it's, you know, with the show, it's like Joe's a stalker or whatever, all that, but I understand certain things need to happen in order to, um, to make this, help the story move along, but if she's, I don't want her to be oblivious, because we as black people, like, I do not feel that we're ever oblivious, it's in our, that generational trauma, what's in our genes to always be aware, the survival instinct that we have is, is, is just unmatched in some ways, like, it's, so I wanted to make sure all of those things were honored yeah. um, in, in the portrayal of Marianne, as well as like, even if she was going to be, the fact that she was a recovering addict, I didn't want it to be like, troped or, or try to make her seem like she was less than. Right. Like, and I really appreciated, appreciated the way Sarah Gamble, our showrunner, she was like, no, she heard me. She was like, absolutely. Um, anything, like if anything feels weird, like please tell me. Um, we had, uh, last season that gets, you, you see a, a bit more get played out this season. We had a, an episode called Missing White Woman Syndrome um, in which Marianne talks about, she's telling Joe about the phenomenon that happens in America that when a white woman goes missing, mm -hmm. everybody goes searching. When a woman of color goes missing, it goes quiet. Um, and you very much see this season, um, Marianne turns into that missing woman of color mm -hmm. um, and nobody comes searching for her. And because she's a, a recovering addict, they think she's relapsed. They think she's like, so it's, I just wanted to, I was like, I, I'm, I'm here for this story, but let's, for those who f do find connection with Marianne, um, whether it be her as a mother, like her as a recovering addict, her as an artist, like mm -hmm. I want them to feel the most, uh, just the most truthful sense of that and not feel that their story is being taken advantage of or taken for granted. Um, so, yeah. Utilizing that platform. Exactly. Very much so. Thank very you much. for that. Very smart. Thank you for coming. Will you come back again and see oh, us? Oh, please. I would absolutely love to. Love have to. You. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. You season four is streaming now. Only on Netflix. We'll be right back. Now, congratulations, you got married. I did, I did. I'm two and a half years married, y'all. Two and a half years, congratulations. And I'm counting every day. You, you gotta be I'm grateful I'm counting every it. day, I'm grateful for every day. This, this marriage thing's an adventure. It's an adventure. <laughs> now, because you write beautiful love songs. Is that how, that's how you got married, with, through the love songs? I, I would like to say the way God made me with or without a love song, I was able to pull the, the love of my life, but... I will say the love songs do help. It helps. It helps to it helps to because it gives you script. So yes. how you can you know uh, I, I sang "Why I Love You," which was a love letter That's I wrote such to a God. Song. Really? It was a love letter I wrote to God, and love wrote me back. So those are bars from from that a heavenly amazing. exchange. And so I, I wanted to help people understand how to do love on earth as it is in heaven. And so finally, I found my "Why I Love You." Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. And you just released your music video, huh? Yeah, for Baby Will You Love Me. And I want to clarify, Baby Will You Love Me actually happens to be... Baby Will You Love Me actually happens to be the love story. Mm. When she walked in, she took the win and nothing else around me mattered. 
gave her my hand, and when we danced, that's when I knew I found the answer. She stole my heart in record time, a beauty like a joy divine. She hypnotized me. She got me, and I did it mine. Tell me, baby, 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 <laughs> will you love me, love me, love me forever and ever and always? If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.